This is Auschwitz, one of the hells of Europe, part of a system which brought death and destruction to millions of human beings. No words can describe what happened in concentration camps like Auschwitz. Gas chambers where millions suffocated. Hair cut from victims for use in Nazi factories. Teeth removed for the minute quantity of gold that might be found to fill the pockets of the local commandant or to swell the party funds. Clothes stolen from the dead, silent witnesses of a crime against a people, the extent of which no man will ever know. Dresses of murdered children, each with its own story of misery and suffering. Of all the peoples of the earth, the first to lose their liberty, the most to suffer the horrors of war and persecution, were the Jews. A helpless minority everywhere, they were the first to be deprived of rights, then robbed, then murdered. In a martyrdom unequaled in human history, more than six million Jews, men, women and children, more than one third of the world's total Jewish population, traveled the road to death. One land, the land of Israel, held out the promise of home to the remnant that did escape. For the Jew there was no room in the world. In one part he could not live, in the other he could not enter. But even here, in Palestine, in all the years of war, only a mere handful, not more than 70,000, of all these millions was able to reach its goal. It was a perilous road they had to travel, but it was the road home, the road to liberty. And so they made their way to their newfound home, those few that did escape, in hope of finding peace. A land where they might live and work and find their self-respect again. A land where in times gone by their ancestors had given great values to the world. Where rooted in the soil the Jew might build for now and evermore. Where his children might be born free men. But the war was not yet over. His chance had come to answer a new call to duty to join a new fighting unit, the Jewish Brigade Group, to avenge as best he could the millions of his kin who still were being tortured, starved and killed. The badge which the Nazis had tried to make a badge of shame was now to be the Jewish Badge of Honor. I know there are vast numbers of Jews serving with our forces and the American forces throughout all the armies, said Winston Churchill as Prime Minister in the House of Commons, but it seems to me to be indeed appropriate that a special Jewish unit, a special unit of that race that has suffered indescribable torments from the Nazis, should be represented as a distinct formation. And so inspired by the word of God, many a Jewish refugee prepared for his return to hated Europe. Side by side with the free Jewish youth of Palestine, they became new men. Already, more than one million Jews were fighting in the armies of the United Nations, and more than 30,000 Jewish volunteers from Palestine were in the British forces. For the Jewish Brigade, young Jewish officers were trained in all the arts of warfare to lead their men in battle. When all was ready, the last parade in Palestine and then farewell. Once in Italy, the Jewish Brigade became part of the British Eighth Army. immortal body of men of many nations fighting for the common cause of liberty. Here was real cooperation. 
on and on they went. These men, born in many lands, now fighting together as one unit, as Jews, proud of their past, hopeful of their future, with the spirit of their Hebrew ancestors in their hearts, and songs of Palestine, of home, on their lips. They made their sacrifices, but they were gladly made, for those that fell had weapons in their hands. Unlike their brothers, who died helpless in Europe's concentration camps, they met the enemy on equal terms. Those were great days, those frontline days in Italy, when patrols of Jewish fighters, descendants of the ancient Maccabees, went out at dead of night in search of the mortal enemy. When they took prisoners, it was a new sensation. Positions were reversed. This is the master race, dedicated to destroy the Jew forever. This Jewish God was himself once in a German camp. Palestine gave him the opportunity of fighting back. It was a great day when Field Marshal Alexander visited the Jewish Brigade. And when Passover, Festival of Freedom, was celebrated to remind these soldiers of Israel's bondage in a previous age. As in the days when Moses led his people across the desert to the Promised Land, the unleavened bread was eaten. And then, to climax all, the day came when somewhere in Italy, the blue-white flag with the Star of David, the national flag of the Jewish people, was raised for all to see. The war over, out of the concentration camps, from hell on earth, Israel's broken remnants come. In what was Dachau, the first Jewish service of thanksgiving, of rededication to God, is held. The few survivors are free again to proclaim their faith, to worship as they please. They offer a prayer for their dead, six million dead. They pray for the living too. In Vienna, in a quiet cemetery on the outskirts of the city, another remnant comes to pay tribute at a grave of fame, the grave of Theodore Herzl the man who a generation ago called to his people to shake off the gloomy past, to return to their ancient homeland, there to build and be rebuilt. Out of concentration camps, they come to tend his grave and reaffirm their faith. With them is a soldier of the Jewish brigade. He too was once a refugee. The remnants of Israel are wandering along the roads, amidst the ruins of Europe, which now has become the graveyard of their people. They cannot return from where they came. They have no place to rest their heads. But like those who have been saved, they have not lost hope that for them too, the day will come when they will travel the road to liberty. Liberty.